We're Yawn Family Farms in Ridge Spring, South Carolina, the Yawn family. And currently we have three generations on the farm and each generation is represented here with us today. So real quick, I'll introduce my mom, Lydia. Hi. Her and my dad um, started this operation and I'll let, she's gonna tell you guys a little bit more about that. I'm Sally, I'm the oldest of their three children and then my brother Drake is here with us today and he's gonna talk more about um, cattle nutrition and what our cows feed ration is and then we have his wife Nicole and their little girl Ellery and then we have my little girl Zoe who is here today. Zoe still Zoe feeding cows uh, hello Hi. the main family members that we're missing today would be my dad Kevin my husband Reed and then our youngest brother Corbin who are off um, baling hay so anyway just a real quick explanation of where we are in the country we are in Ridge Spring South Carolina and we've been here since 1996 and our main uh, goal of our operation is to sell Angus bulls to commercial cattlemen. We have about 1,500 mama cows and we sell about 500 bulls in our two sales that we have, one in the fall and one in the spring. So I think I'm gonna let my mom give you a little bit more info on the history. Okay, so I'm Lydia and like Sally told you, I met Kevin and Clemson where we both were in school and majoring in animal science. And we managed a farm outside of Columbia, South Carolina named Congaree Farms for seven years. And then the owner of that farm decided to get rid of his cattle. So we um, managed to purchase a hundred of those cattle and we moved to Ridge Spring, South Carolina in 1996. And at that time we had a hundred cows and we had three children under the age of five. So that was kind of exciting um, to make the move with them to a farm that had really nothing except a hundred acre pasture with a piece of a fence around it. Just as much as being cattle farmers, we're also grass farmers. And as you see out in the field behind me, there's a lot of really green grass and it's um, a couple of different kinds of grass. And there are different um, species of grasses that we feed our cattle. So we're grass farmers and cattle farmers um, and they go together perfectly because cattle are able to do something really amazing. They're really um, quite unique in that they can take this and turn it into really great products for humans. A lot of times you'll hear people say that a cow has four stomachs. That's not really exactly true, but they do have four compartments to their stomach. And what happens is they eat the grass and it goes into the first compartment of their stomach and it starts being digested, but it needs a little help because grass has a lot of um, Hard to digest then you may have heard them talk uh, people mention a cow chewing its cud and that's actually um, what they do is they burp up partially digested grass and a lot of times they just look like they're meditating or chilling out when they're chewing their cud it's a really relaxing time for them but what they do is um, and they do it for quite a bit in a day's span but, um, they chew it up some more and then they swallow that chewed up cud and then it goes through the other compartments of their stomach and um, from that point on, they're able to take up all the nutrients they need from grass, which makes them really special. Not the only ones that can do it, but I think the products that cattle make are um, the best ones that you can get as a result of being a grass eater. So I'm going to pass it over to Drake now, and he's going to talk a little bit more about other things cattle eat. So, uh, like Mom mentioned, the, the main thing that our cattle eat and the cattle across America eat is grass. It's been 85 degrees here all week. It's actually a cool 60 two right now I think um, so we've, we've been able to grow lots of grass here this spring and um, that's the case around the country is that that cattle survive on grass and something that's that's missed often I think is how many acres that cattle can use that nothing else can and um, that's kind of gonna be the theme of my talk is things that cattle can use that nothing else can um, we can't always grow grass like this we try to but we can't we can't do it year-round so when we can't do it we, um, we're feeding them what's called a TMR, a total mixed ration. And all that means is it's just a mixture of different feeds. So I'm gonna walk you real quickly through each ingredient that we feed and um, explain a little bit. And I'm gonna kind of dump it in this bucket like one of those fun Facebook recipe videos. In the winter time, they're gonna eat almost a pound of straw. This is oat straw. And what that is, is what's left over after a combine harvest oats. And um, it goes in their ration and it's mostly just in there to fill them up. That, that rumen that's used to eating lots and lots of grass is like a big 55 gallon drum swinging 
on the mama's belly. So we've got to keep it full to keep her happy. We're going to dump almost a pound of, of straw. Then the next ingredient that we're going to do is small grain baleage. So just like this grass that we see growing, we take annual grasses and harvest them when they're vegetative. M much like this field we're in, we'll cut it and bale it and, and wrap it in plastic and it lets it go through a fermentation or like a pickling process. So of this, they're eating about, let's see, four and a half pounds of this. And it's, you can't tell it because it's on camera, but this is wetter and it's actually got a sweet smell to it um, because we're baling it when it's vegetative. And we don't have the tractor here, but we actually have a big uh, piece of cake mixer it can, it can mix about 15,000 pounds of speed at a time and the next ingredient is corn silage corn silage is when you take the entire plant corn plant stalk um, leaf kernel everything but the roots and you chop it up into about one inch long pieces like that and um, we haul it back to a to a concrete pit and we pack it down really tight to get all the air out of it and, and cover it in plastic and it allows it to go through a similar fermentation process, um, pickling it, just like turning a cucumber into a pickle. So they're gonna eat about 13 pounds of this. So far, everything we've dumped in here is something that a cow can use, but really nothing else other than those corn kernels that are in the corn silage. This next product is called gin trash, but it's basically everything that the gin spits out the other end that's not good cotton lint to make a t-shirt out of or not the actual cotton seeds. But believe it or not, it's actually nutritionally to a cow about the same as good dry Bermuda hay. And then the next product is the cotton seed. So again, that same cotton gin, um, they're, they're separating the seeds from the lint and um this seed has still got that oil in it um some there's some crushing facility that actually use the oil out of them for other uses but it's actually a uh, really good for, for fat and protein for cattle again they're going to eat about two or three pounds per head of this so we'll dump that in there then the last two soy hole pellets so when a soybean gets harvested it gets processed for the oil or turned into a feed but this is the the actual hole that's around that little soybean um, and they take it and dry it and actually turn it into a pellet um, which just to make it easier for the cattle to eat um, so they're gonna eat about five or six pounds of that again that's something that not many other animals can use but a cow uses it and it makes a really good feed for her all right and then the last thing we're gonna give them three ounces of mineral and that is exactly like what it sounds like it's uh it's like your daily vitamin that we're all supposed to take that is a lot of feed that's 30 pounds of feed and that's what one cow eats in the winter time but again per day per day 30 pounds per day and that's on a, on a weight basis you know both from an economic standpoint it makes sense to us because we can use these feeds that other animals can't so they're cheaper to us but then it also just makes sense from a sustainability standpoint that we're using um, things that otherwise would be trash so all these different ingredients we didn't just come up with that concoction on our own um, we use a, a certified um, he's a PhD in, in ruminant nutrition that's a nutritionist that we hire thank you guys for joining us today we hope you learned a little bit